Hey, how's it going, YouTube? This is Eric with the Eric Abroad Weekly Podcast, and welcome to podcast number three. Yeah, welcome, you guys. Of course, uh, the Eric Abroad Podcast is a podcast where we look at Japan, uh, discuss Japanese culture and the Japanese language. Uh, with me today, we have a new member. This is, uh, you can kind of see him in the corner, this black lump here laying on my bed. Uh, this is Shinobi. Uh, he is a... Uh, a dog. <laughs> He's a uh, my friend's friend's dog. And uh, long story short, our the friend is currently out of the country, um, but he will be coming back. So we're temporarily uh, keeping an eye on Shinobi for about a month now. And as you can see, he has already claimed my bed, which I'm not really stoked about. As much as I love dogs, um, if there's hair all over my bed and it's not my dog you know it's not as good so um but he's great he's kind of old so he just kind of sits there and sleeps all day so he's great so welcome shinobi to the uh erica broad podcast we kind of have a lot to talk about today um uh today's topic we're going to be discussing something that's a little bit relevant to how i'm feeling currently um last night i went out with some friends nothing like crazy nothing like really special or anything i just went out um and got drinks and stuff um uh, but since I've come back to America from Japan, uh, from my study abroad in Japan, I haven't gone drinking very much. Uh, I don't, only because I drink so much in Japan. <laughs> so that's what we're going to discuss today. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit hungover. Um, so I'm just tired. I, it may look like I'm really upped and perky and stuff. It's because I just drank a lot of coffee. So um, I hope you guys bear with me. I hope my voice isn't too wrecked or anything. Um, I'm actually going out again later tonight. Uh, because my boss gave me two tickets to go see the Blazer game. Uh, the Blazer is the or Blazers are the basketball team here in Portland. Um, so I'm gonna go with my dad. I invited my dad to go out there because I haven't hung out with my dad in a while. So looking forward to it, but I'm really tired. Um, I think the only thing to cure being hungover is another drink. So <laughs> we'll probably go and get some drinks and some food, and it'll be fine. I'm just uh, kind of tired today, so I hope. Uh, the podcast is still entertaining, but here we go. Um, a few things obviously have happened. Uh, the American election went down. Um, let, we're not going to talk about that too much today. Uh, one, uh, I don't really want to talk about it uh, because people are probably kind of tired of hearing about it. And uh, I try to keep podcasts, or sorry, I try to keep politics out of my YouTube channel and podcasts as I, as a person, don't uh, personally get uh, involved too much in politics just because it's you know, it's, it's controversial, it's stressful, and it's just kind of, it's something I don't really like to deal with. Um, and this is my podcast, so we're not going to talk about politics. Um, however, we are going to talk about, or I just want to bring up, uh, it's been pretty crazy in Portland uh, since uh, Donald Trump got elected. Um, and uh, again, congrats to anyone who voted for Trump. Um, I personally didn't vote for either one, so um, I can't like say, but Oregon as a whole uh, voted blue, voted for Hillary. Um, so it's interesting because uh, if anyone's been watching the news uh, here in America, there's obviously been protests and uh, I guess some riots now too um, regarding the Donald Trump election because it's a very, you know, <clears throat> very surprising win for Trump. And a lot of people didn't see it coming. Uh, so in Portland, the last like few days, it's been pretty nuts where people have been doing, uh, there's been peaceful <clears throat> peaceful protests but there's also been uh some riots where they've i've heard there's been a shooting uh I, I haven't checked my sources so don't quote me on that but i heard there was a shooting um and the police have had to use flash grenades and things like that to get people to you know get out of the streets and stuff because all the trains have been backed up and i i personally ride the train so um i've had i've noticed that where they're like yeah you're not going to get off here you have to get off you know they uh they have to change the routes and stuff so that's pretty uh that's been pretty interesting. The other day, I actually got sent home early by my boss. Um, he called and said, hey, the uh, the riders are on the way to the office, um, so go home. <laughs> so that was kind of scary. Like, it was kind of cool. I was like, yeah, nice. But it's it's kind of freaky knowing that that was actually like a concern from the higher up. So um, pretty nuts. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be doing uh, things, something a little bit different. I want to kind of introduce something. So before we get into discussing... Uh, dr like nightlife in Japan, going out drinking and stuff like that. Um, I would like to pull up, um, I get lots of comments all the time, lots of questions in my uh, YouTube videos, you know, just asking various questions th and things like that. And I always say like, okay, I'll answer this in some video. Um, and up to this point, I kind of haven't. So um, starting today, I started going through some of my videos and finding some uh, questions that are in there. And um, let me turn up my volume one second. Sorry about that. I can't really hear 
my own voice, so I feel like I'm shouting. There we go. <clears throat> so I can hear myself really well. Um, so I've pulled up some questions from uh, my latest, I think, four videos. Um, and yeah, I just kind of want to answer them for you guys. And uh, I hope it also encourages people in the future to ask more questions in the comments because I read all the comments. So um, if you have a question, I am seeing it. Um, and I'd like to include it into the podcast from now on. So if you have a question, feel free to ask. Um, and maybe it'll get into the podcast if you want it to get answered. Um, yeah, so without further ado here, I'll just, I'm going to read a few here. Um, let's start off. Let's see. I have a list here. Okay. Uh, oh, and by the way, I'm going to be reading the names of the, at least of the YouTube account. Um, so if it's like your real name, I feel weird saying your name, but, um, because the comments already public, I'm assuming you're already okay with your name being out there. But if for any reason you don't want me to say your name or whatever, like for the comment or for the podcast, just, you know, add that, just let me know, like, Hey, please don't use my name or whatever. And that's all I need to know. But for today, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it's already public anyway. So here we go. So first question, um, is from Ruth. I'll just say, okay. Yeah. Ruth cause is the account name, but Ruth says, uh, Oh, I guess it's not really a question. It's more of a suggestion. Um, it says, Eric, I would recommend you to make some videos about Kansai Ben, Izakaya's and a lot of beautiful places in Japan. Anyways, looking forward to seeing your videos. Gambate. Thank you very much, Ruth. Um, so the question there was about uh, Kansai Ben. Was Kansai Ben is uh, Ben means like a dialect in Japanese, and Kansai is a region in Japan. Um, and the region I studied in was the Kansai region. So um, the Kansai region has its own dialect that's very strong and very. Uh, it varies very greatly from Tokyo. Um, if anyone uh, studies Japanese and wants to get kind of an idea of what Kansai Ben sounds like, if you listen to comedians which I know are hard to understand already, but if you like listen to comedians or maybe some shows where they use that, um, the biggest difference is that instead of da, they use ya. So like to say like, it's delicious, you'd say like oishida. Um, but in Kansai, you say oishia or umaya. You'd say like umai means good. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that would be a video I'd love to do a, uh, or that would be a topic I'd love to do a video about. And I plan on doing one as well. Um, I just want to get like, I would love to, um, bring in, I have a friend actually that I'm good friends with who's from the region. Um, he lives in Portland, uh, but he's from Osaka. So I think that'd be really cool to get him in and maybe like consult with him to get some more words because as I know, I learned quite a bit while I was there. Uh, but there's a lot to Kansai Ben and it's a really, um, to learn it is difficult, but I want to learn it really bad because I think it's really cool. And uh, in Japan, it's kind of a cool dialect. It's kind of funny. It's a little bit more like relaxed. So if you use it, it's more of a comedic comedian. Um, and if you're American, it's I think it's kind of cool. So um, I want to learn that. So I will be doing that in the future at some point. Uh, the next part of the question was izakayas. Um, izakayas are um, a type of restaurant in Japan, which I guess fits with today's topic. We're going to be talking about going out and things like that. Um, it's kind of more of, of a, uh, how can I say it's a great place to get drinks and like delicious, like, um, how can I say not maybe fried food too, but like, <clears throat> I usually get, uh, like yakitori, which is like uh fried, it's basically shish kebab chicken kind of on skewers. Um, you get kind of food like that with like beers and, um, they have the nomi horai, which we're going to discuss later as well, which is uh, all you can drink is what that is. And it's uh, a great thing. Um, so, yeah, she was just suggesting, Ruth was suggesting that I make those videos in the future. So thanks for the suggestion, Ruth. I definitely plan on doing that. Um, thank you for reminding me that I need to do that. Um, next question by Purple Lady one uh, Eric, may I know when you are going to go to Japan again? Um, <clears throat> I'm planning and hoping to go back uh, in the fall of 2017, because I'm going to be graduating, uh, just before that. And I hope to go back to Japan. Uh, at first I'm going to go back to teach English. Hopefully, um, I'm trying to, uh, get a job through some friends that work at, um, some different schools. Um, not that I have a huge passion for teaching English, but it's simply the easiest job to get as a foreigner in Japan. Um, you need a bachelor's degree, but there's various programs you can do, but I would like to avoid, um, anyways, I'm figuring it out. I was going to say, I'm trying to avoid the programs and I'm trying to just apply for a job directly. Um, but I don't have experience teaching English other than that. I just speak it. So, um, I'm still figuring that out. I may, I, you know, if I'm going to take any like English teaching courses to supplement that, but I don't think I need to. Um, anyways, I'm still looking into that. So sorry, that's kind of a half unanswered question, but I hope to go back, uh, in the fall of 2017. Um, uh, so hopefully I can do that. Um, Next question is from Brian S. Uh, I have a question for you. 
I plan to go back to Japan, uh, but I kind of want to go during the winter or fall months. Any season you prefer, for whatever reason. Uh, okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, yes, <laughs> I hate the summer in Japan. Um, okay, I don't want to say hate because I actually haven't experienced it like fully, so I can't totally say. Um, but the summers in Japan are brutally hot. I discussed this, I think, in a previous podcast. Like the humidity in Japan during the summer. Um, for someone like me, I live in Oregon uh, of America that has no, almost no humidity. Like it rains, but that's not like it's not like heat humidity kind of like a jungle like a rainforest kind of shit i know the east coast gets a lot more humid in florida and the south gets very humid too uh but when i first went to japan in august uh it was brutally hot um but the only reason i say uh that it might be a good thing to go to is there's a lot of uh, festivals in the summer they have a lot of like firework festivals and food events and things like that um that would that's something of course i would love to experience um as I haven't done like a full summer in Japan yet. Uh, but if I would, if you were planning on just going to travel, um, I would absolutely recommend the fall or the spring, um, as the two, uh, fall is great. Uh, I'm from Oregon, so I'm used to cold weather. I love cold weather. I love the fall. Uh, like, uh, you know, the leaves turn red and it's, it's cold, but it's dry. I love it. If it's dry, if it's raining, it's pretty shitty, but if it's cold and dry, um, that is like some of the best weather in my opinion. I think it's great. It's just like there's something beautiful about it. It's quiet. I, I don't know. I love it. Um, and then the spring is great because they have the cherry blossom season, which is beautiful. I made one video on that, uh, before and I, that is, that is a whole nother experience for Japan. So if I had to choose either fall or spring, it just depends which one, uh, you prefer. Um, I don't want to do too many questions here and take up too much time. So let's maybe do like one or two more. Um, Let's see. Uh, there was another question regarding uh, the weather. Uh, Eric, did you work while you were in Japan? Uh, yes, but no. Uh, I didn't work like under an official job. <clears throat> I did some English teaching uh, with like a like basically a friend knew a guy who wanted to learn better English and was like, hey, could you do like a, they call it a kaior, which means like, a, it's an English conversation class, basically. Um, so I did some like kind of under the table jobs where I'd go and hang out for a couple hours, speak English, and I'd get like 20 bucks, you know, like not a real job. It was, it was more, I was interested in doing it, um, not for the money, but for the experience. Like what it's, I had to kind of learn, like, how do I teach English? How do I like prep a lesson for like a discussion? And um, so that was a lot of fun. So that was the kind of work I did. Uh, a little bit while I was in Japan, not a whole lot, um, but it was a really good experience. I think it's really fun and I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, especially because I had full control of like the class. I like set up some lessons and like, uh, I wrote scripts basically for kind of like almost like plays that we acted out. Like this person went to, and I try to make them like fun. So it was like, like real, like, all right, this person went to a party. Uh, but when you got to the party, some, you know, I tried to use like slang words that Americans use and maybe some curse words, but like words that are actually useful, not just for the sake of teaching curse words. Um, it's words that we use a lot. So it's like real English, you know? So I thought that was really fun. I really, really enjoyed it. So I could definitely see myself, um, enjoying teaching English in the future if, uh, that's, you know, kind of where life takes me. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so that was, I, I think, again, I think it'd be cool to, um, uh, answer questions uh every week just because you guys have a lot and sometimes i can't get to all of them so i think this is kind of cool um thank you for the questions everyone and if you have more questions i'll maybe include them in the next week's podcast um yes so today we're talking about outing and going out drinking in japan uh drinking nightlife so i guess if we were gonna have a word of the day uh for today's podcast a word of a japanese word of the day uh okay we're gonna have two uh one is called nomi hodai nomi hodai so you kind of nomi and then you it's not nomi hodai it's nomi hodai so hold the o there uh it's technically like an o, like an o and a u kind of nomi hodai uh don't sound out the u just hold the o uh nomi hodai is um a word for uh instead of an all you can eat buffet it's all you can drink. <laughs> so, for example, if you went into an izakaya that has no mihodai, and most of them do, um, you'd pay about $15 or so. It depends on the place, of course. Um, and they set a timer, and you and your group, well, it's $15 per person, you all pay. Um, you have two hours to drink as much as possible. 
So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, for Americans, that's a completely unheard of concept. In Japan, if you're Japanese listening to this, you're probably like, yeah, well, what's, what's so special about Nomi Holodai? Well, it's because in America and any other country outside of Japan, we don't have it. <laughs> uh, if we had Nomi Holodai in America, it would literally be like a riot. Uh, it'd be it'd be chaos. The country would literally like fall apart. There's no way it would work. I heard apparently in Germany, they and you know Germany is a big drinking country, or so I've heard. Um, they I, I heard that they tried to implement like an all you can drink thing for a while, and it was only allowed for like a week because too many people died. <laughs> so that's the difference in Japan. You know, um, drinking is a really really huge part of Japanese culture. Um, and I hope that this video, uh, for those of you who maybe don't drink or don't like going out or things like that, I personally didn't really, I, you know, I liked going out as much as the next guy, but like, I didn't really appreciate going out until I went into Japan. Um, I guess before going to Japan, uh, if you were to talk to me from like three years ago, I would be the guy who would rather like hang out kind of at like a house party. Like if people are like, oh, we might go out to this club and then go get drinks here. Um, and I'm kind of like, why don't we just stay home and like watch Netflix and play card games or something, you know, like that was, you know, and sometimes that's great. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I, sometimes that's like much better if you're just trying to like relax and chill out. Um, but it wasn't until I went to Japan and experienced the Izakayas, the Nomi Hodai, uh, the, basically the, the, like the clubs, the karaoke, it's all set up basically so that you can go literally all night. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about that because it's very, very different than going out in America, unless you live maybe in like Vegas or Miami or New York, where maybe clubbing is a little bit more common. Um, I live in Oregon and there, <laughs> there are clubs here, but believe me, they're not clubs. They're more just like big bars, like a bar with like a big room. It's just, they're not clubs. Um, Japan has proper, proper clubs, um, and I never would consider myself like a club person because it kind of, you know, it has a persona to it. Like, oh, you're a club kid. You're a club person. It's kind of some, you know what I mean? It kind of, in America, it kind of has like a stigma with it. Like someone who kind of, you know, I don't know, spends, brags about money. Maybe a guy who goes to clubs is like a player. Um, girls are kind of like, uh, I don't know, sluts or whatever. But like, and of course that, you know, that exists in Japan too. But it was like, I don't know. I Going to, anyways, I'm kind of uh yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot more common of a thing there. Like a lot of kids were like, oh yeah, we're going to a club later. And I was like, wait, what? Like I, that's never even been like a thing for me. Um, so doing that was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. I hope I don't get too distracted here. I'm just trying to, uh, okay. So I'm just pulling up my, uh, trusty notes here. So because I was studying abroad in Japan, um, oh, I guess the second word of the day, I guess we could do, cause we had nomi hodai and the second one I guess would be I don't know if this is a good word to do for word of the day, but we're going to do it because there's two. Uh, odekake. Um, but I've never like said that word with uh, Japanese friends. Like odekake means dekakeru is um, to go out. So dekakemasu, dekakeru. And dokake is, uh, or dekake is the stem form. I guess the nominal form is what you'd call it. It's basically a noun. Uh, odekake means like outing, like to go out, the act of going out or whatever. Um, so odekake and nomi hodai are the words of the day, I guess. But um, it might be a little bit of a fancy word. I'm actually not sure. Kind of like formal, uh, like outing rather than like party, like party or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, because I was studying abroad and obviously I was a college student, uh, we went out a lot um, with American friends and Japanese friends. And um, I fell in love. I I really, really fell in love with the, the outing, going out culture in Japan. And Part of the reason I think that um, going out in Japan is also so great is that house parties are not really a thing in Japan. At least uh, when I went in my experience for like college kids, it's not really a thing because houses in Japan are a lot smaller. Uh, apartments are a lot smaller than American ones or even probably, uh, well, European, I'm actually not sure. How big are European homes? And uh, I guess it depends where you live, like maybe in like London or something. Well, that's like a big city. I don't know. I'm curious. It's I'm, but I imagine that even European apartments are probably bigger than Japanese ones cuz I uh a few of my friends lived in apartments near the school that I went to and they're 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 more or less one small room which includes your kitchen, bed and then a bathroom. Um 
it's basically just a place to get your laundry done, get some sleep and maybe make some food, but it's not a place really to hang out. Like we did have hangouts at apartments, but it's, it's not like America where you can kind of host a party or have like beer pong or for anyone who does those kinds of uh, hangout events, you can't, you can't really do it. Uh, so instead they go out. Um, and basically one of the, one of the main, uh, I guess kind of like eating and drinking plans we did was called a, I hope I'm saying it right. There was a nomi tabe hodai or tabe nomi, tabe nomi hodai. Like I think you can switch it. Tabe, tabe means to eat. Um, so it's an all you can eat, all you can drink plan. So usually it was about 3000 yen, which, uh, in American dollars is about 30 bucks. Um, you get all, for two hours, you get all you can eat and all you can drink. Uh, so the, the whole thing is, is you basically get a group of about five or six people. Um, and at some places you have to make reservations, but most of the time we would just show up. Um, a lot of these places are really cheap, um, but they're nice and you get like your own booth. Um, you can show up and get like your own table and kind of your own section. It's kind of like a, it feels almost like your own kind of VIP section. So we would go out like after school on like a Friday, um, go to a Nomitabe Hodai. This is to start off the night, by the way. Um, these are us- we usually did a lot of all nighters and um, which were exhausting. They're not, they, they never got easy to get used to, but they're so much fun. And um, so yeah, Nomi Tabe Hodai, we'd go to a place, uh, maybe like an Izakaya, for example, um, that type of restaurant where it's just like, it's kind of a louder environment. It's not like so quiet. It's usually like people are okay to be a little loud and make jokes and kind of, you know, horse around. Um, so I love Izakayas because they're just great and they're very Japanese. Um, in that I don't know they just feel very Japanese the, the menus and stuff and all the food on there are still very Japanese um but it's a place where you can kind of be loud and obnoxious which is really good um so we we did that a lot we, we would usually start off the night with like a nomi tabe hodai and that's kind of like the I guess instead of pre-gaming which we do in America we call it pre-gaming uh I don't know if uh in other countries what you would call it but it's basically like before you go out uh in order to save money but also just to kind of start things off you you meet at a house have some shots, have some drinks, and then you go out and then you're kind of like, you know, already, you know, maybe a little drunk or whatever. Um, but we would kind of do that as the way to kind of start things off. But believe me in two hours, um, especially as Americans who take, who kind of take it, not take advantage, but you know, take advantage of the moment. (laughs) It's like, Oh my gosh, I have unlimited drinks. I can literally drink as many beers as possible in the next two hours. Um, although I will say that the, uh, the Nomi Hodai menus are definitely like, um, the really cheap alcohol, the really, it's not very good. So if you're someone who maybe likes to drink like whiskey or tequila or something like that, you likely aren't going to be a huge fan of the Nomi Hodai menu. As far as like, it's more of just a menu that gets you, you know, gets you drunk or gets you drinking. Um, but so it's, I usually stick to beer and then rum and Coke because Coke is good. Those are my two drinks of choice in Japan, rum and Coke and just, uh, light beers. And they call it a nama biru. Nama means raw. So it's like just kind of like a raw beer, whatever that means. It's basically like a Bud Light. (laughs) It's basically a really, really light beer. And um, yeah, so sorry, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here. But basically, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to list the different like things we would do. So basically, for example, we'd go out, we'd go to an izakaya, do a nomi tabe hodai. Um, And then after that, we would be in Namba was the city that we usually went to. it's inside of Osaka and it's really popular. It's a really popular tourist attract or tourist like a city, but it's also has tons and tons and tons of clubs and bars, um, that are open all night. Um, and in Japan, drinking outside is totally legal. Like I said, uh, drinking is a huge part of Japanese culture. So drinking outside, drinking on the trains, you can drink anywhere. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions. Like if you go to a movie theater, maybe they don't want you to bring stuff in. Um, but like legally any place that's like public, you're, you're fine to drink, um, alcohol in, which is a really, um, for Americans, that's a really, really big culture shock because in America, um, our liquor laws are very, very, very strict. Um, one, you have to be 21 years old to drink, which, in you know, that's, that's really, it's pretty old in Japan. It's 20. Um, but even in Japan, um, from what I saw, they're not very strict about checking IDs. Um, if you're like 18 or 19 in Japan, especially if you're a foreigner, um, if you go to buy alcohol at a, like a 7-Eleven, like a convenience store or something, or maybe even in a restaurant, um, you'll usually, you'll probably be fine. Um, they usually don't check IDs. 
Um, so I'm not trying to promote underage drinking, obviously, on the podcast, but uh, that is a part of I had a lot of friends that were maybe like, you know, so maybe I was a little older uh, because I am a little older in college, but I sometimes we'd have some friends that were 19 in the group. Uh, everyone else is 21, 20, uh, and then like one person was 19. And you can kind of usually get away with just kind of having them there, and it wasn't a big deal. There was one time that a, uh, a karaoke bar, not a bar, but a karaoke place did check IDs, and one of my friends, he was 19. Uh, so we weren't allowed to do the Nomi or the Nomi Hodai, but uh, we just brought booze in with our backpacks. So it was okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, again, I, I hope this podcast isn't just like a snore to anyone who doesn't like going out. Um, I, I think this is a good, uh, this is still an important dis- topic as much as I'm just talking about like partying and stuff. Um, because like I said, it's a part of the Japanese culture. So if you're going to go to Japan, um, especially on a weekend, like a Friday or Saturday, you will see, you will likely see a lot of drunk people in the street. Um, it's much more tolerated in America. If you're drunk in the street, you are subject to getting arrested. Um, if you're, if you're belligerent, if you're just drunk and you're not bothering anyone, um, you know, uh, that's fine usually. Um, but you can get arrested for just simply being drunk. If you're being kind of loud or whatever in Japan, in Japan, um, people aren't usually, at least, um, in my experience, people weren't as loud, at least the, sorry, let me rephrase that. Younger kids were very loud. (laughs) Uh, the, the older we call they're, they're what's known, they're, they're known as salary men. Um, though anyone who knows or has been studying Japanese culture is probably aware of a stereotypical salary man or salary woman. Um, the, the meaning of a salary man is someone that is, uh, you know, just someone who works at a, like a, at a company or a business. Um, they wear a suit and tie. They work really, really hard. They get worked really hard hours. A lot of them, unfortunately, it's actually, it's a, it's kind of a sad social issue. Um, a lot of salary men and salary women work jobs that they don't particularly enjoy, or they maybe face abuse in the workplace, but it's their job. Um, Japanese companies expect workers to work at that same company until they die. Um, it's not like America where you can just apply for a job, work there for three years and then go somewhere else and quit. Um, it's a lot more, they, they, Basically, when you get hired, um, instead of rather than having like a back, say like, say for example in Japan you wanted to work at like and it, like at like an engineering firm or something like or a firm I don't know like an engineering place how can I say I'm losing my train of thought. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that um, I'm sorry, I'm a little hungover, so this is hard to focus. Uh, I'm basically trying to say that if you get hired at a company, usually within the first couple. Of, okay, for example. I have a friend right now who just got hired uh, by JR. I think it's I think that's what it's called, JR Airlines. It's like the Japanese uh, airlines and to become a pilot. Um, does my friend did he study aviation in college? No. Was he you know like in any kind of air force? No. What happens is um, if your grades are good enough and you graduated from school and you have a degree and stuff, when you get hired into a company. Um, they actually train you for the first few years for the job because they're expecting you to work with them forever. Um, Seriously, until you retire, they kind of, that's kind of the expectation is that you stay with them. Uh, So my friend right now is training to become a pilot. I personally, from, from an American's perspective, that is the coolest thing on earth. Uh, If I got hired from a company and like I wanted to become an engineer or like, I don't know, I'm just trying to think like a, not a lawyer, but basically like, like I, those like engineers and lawyers and doctors and scientists, those jobs, you'd obviously probably like, you'd have to, you know, go to medical school, uh, lawyer school. What do you call that? Law school, <laughs> lawyer school. That shows how much I know about law school. Um, jobs that are in that kind of field are probably a little bit more spe- specific and you need like a background. Um, but a lot of jobs you can just, you get, once you're hired, they train you there because they're expecting you. So they kind of invest money into your education to get you going. And then you start and you work there forever. So, uh, sorry, I went off on a little tangent there. Uh, but that's a really big different, uh, hiring process than in America. Um, but a lot of salary men, you know, are kind of stuck with their jobs. Um, and unfortunately there's a lot of abuse and a lot of, uh, depression related to work. Um, Hence, uh, you'll often hear a lot about suicides in Japan, which is an unfortunate thing. Um, when I was in Japan, uh, there was actually one incident 
where I the train that I took every day to school, uh, someone had jumped in front of the train, unfortunately. Um, I woke up and the train was delayed. Uh, there was, uh, you know, like a police crew there that were, you know, cleaning up and taking photos of the whole event. Um, I luckily didn't see it happen. Um, I wasn't there when it happened, fortunately. Um, <clears throat> but apparently there was a salary man who uh, jumped in front of a moving train. Uh, as you're waiting for trains, there's always one, there's some that pass through the station because um, they skip. Like, say, for example, there's like the faster train. Like, if I need to get as far north as quickly as possible, you'd wait for the red line as opposed to the black line, which the black one's like the local one. The red line will skip every five stations. So uh, as a train was skipping through, someone had leaped forward and jumped through. Um, and it, it that was an interesting um, thing to go through as well because when I went to school, I was obviously late for school because I, my train was delayed. Um, and when I went to class, I, you know, I explained to the teacher who all the teachers knew, uh, cause it, when it's in the news, you know, everyone gets informed so that they're, that they know, um, <clears throat> my teacher asked me, so where's your, where's your note? And I said, what, what, no, what are you talking about? Um, they said, oh, well in Japan, if a train is delayed more than five minutes, the train station legally has to give everyone a note explaining that, um, the train was late that day. So that when you go into work, if you're five or 10 minutes late, uh, you can actually show proof that like, Hey, this wasn't my fault because a lot of people in Japan rely on trains to get to work on time. So, uh, I had to go back to the train station after school, get the note and then bring it back to the school just to prove that I was late. Uh, which, but that was, I thought that was interesting that the train stations do that. So obviously an unfortunate situation that that happened. Um, and it's something that does, uh, occur often. Um, but that's a salary, man. Unfortunately, not all salarymen, of course. I have a lot of friends who whose parents are salarymen or salarywomen, and um, it's fine. But that's but the the stereotype does exist because it is a social issue in Japan. Um, so because a lot of salarymen maybe don't enjoy their jobs and they work for the weekend or you know just they're just trying to get by. Um, one way that Japanese salarymen and salarywomen cope with their jobs is they drink a lot after work, even during the week, like during weekdays, but especially on a Friday or Saturday night. Um, if you go out in Japan, you will see uh, my first night, my first Friday was in Tokyo. And I remember getting on the train and everyone waiting in line for the train was just, they all had their eyes shut, they were in suits and they were just swaying like this. You know, they were just really, really drunk. Um, I, I got on the train and a lady was in a business kind of like skirt and um, she was holding her purse. She fell asleep and it fell, landed on the floor. All of her stuff went out, her cell phone, her lipstick, uh, makeup, everything bursted out. She was laying, uh, for those not watching the video, I apologize, but basically she was sprawled out. She was kind of like this, just had her arms out. She was asleep. And her legs were spread wide open, so she had a, and she had the skirt on. So it was kind of this interesting thing for me to see, just like what, like whoa, she was hammered. <laughs> and um, but so was everyone else on the train. A lot of the men and um, uh, occasionally people throw up on the trains and things like that. But the funny thing was, is in Tokyo, every station has a different uh, little like jingle. Like when you arrive at a station, it plays a little tune, like do 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 do. Um, and they're all different for each station. So it was hilarious to sit and watch. Um, everyone riding the trains falling asleep. Um, but as you arrive at each station, you see the people wake up from their sleep who hear the jingle. So this lady also did the same thing. She was, I thought she was knocked out. I'm like, there's no way she's waking up. She's going to ride this train all the way to the end and wake up somewhere, uh, where she didn't want to go, which I've done before. Um, no, she was asleep. Uh, we got to a station and what's up, Shinobi? What's up, Shinobi? I see the dog in my corner. He's he's looking up. He's really into the story right now. Um, yeah, she heard her uh, her train station jingle. She woke up from her sleep, got up, picked up all her shit, and just got off. <laughs> no one stole anything from her. It was it was just that was my first introduction to um, Friday nights in Japan. Um, yeah, that so that's. If you go out drinking in Japan, uh, you'll see that, that that's a very common thing, um, being publicly drunk. Um, it's very tolerated. And because also in Japan, um, a lot of people ride trains and buses rather than cars. Cars exist, but if you want to go out in Japan, 
you take the train because then there's no issues with drinking and driving. Um, and they're really convenient and they're everywhere. So it's a very tolerated thing. It's kind of an expected thing. And, you know, um, I personally never got into any like, uh, bad encounters with drunk Japanese. Not that I think, not that I can remember nothing like too bad. At least, you know, there's p drunk people do stupid things all the time, but nothing where it ever got violent or anything like that. So that was, uh, an interesting self introduction to that. Um, or interesting, interesting introduction into kind of that like culture. Um, so going back to myself and being in, uh, college in Japan, um, yeah, we went out, um, almost every weekend with like good Japanese friends. And of course, all the, a lot of the guys wanted to go out to the clubs to hang out with girls and things like that. Um, which was fun. Uh, and we'd go to the izakayas, get food. Um, so there's basically, there's various, there's a few places, um, various places that I'll list here that are great for going out, like just on a regular basis rather than like a special event or anything. Um, like I already mentioned the izakayas for eating and drinking, um, karaoke bars, uh, karaoke places are a great, uh, place to go to drink and hang out. Um, and eat as well. They actually have really good food there. Basically what karaoke, there's karaoke bars, which are probably more reminiscent to an American one where there's like one machine in a bar and it's everyone's listening to this terrible person singing, but it's fun. Um, in Japan, the karaoke places, the, the, what I consider the good ones. Um, and a lot of kids, a lot of kids go to karaoke, like younger, like junior high, even high school, college and adults. It's a very fun thing to do is you basically go into a karaoke place and you tell them how many people you have and stuff and you pay for a room and you basically get like five or six hours of that room and they're usually 24 hours. So you like, you just pay like, all right, we're going to do five hours and you do that. Um, so for example, like say I went out to an izakaya, we went and got drinks, stuff like that. After that, we went to a bar. After that, we went to a club for a little bit and then, oh, we're kind of tired, but we missed the train. Oh shit. What do we, what do we do? We missed the train. The trains in Japan, uh, end roughly at about midnight, at least in Osaka they did. Uh, they ended at midnight. Um, so what happens is if you miss a train, well, unless you take a taxi or have a friend who can drive, you are stuck wherever you are until about five in the morning when the trains start back up. Um, so one of our go-to things was like, oh, we're out and we missed the last train because we're having fun. Let's go to karaoke. <laughs> Uh, you basically, you can kind of treat a karaoke place almost like a hotel in a sense. Um, basically after you pay, you go into the room, you have unlimited, they have a kind of a drinking section, not with alcohol, but with, um, at least not the ones I went to. It was usually, it's like all you can drink soda and fountain drinks and coffee and things like that and water. Um, but if you have a backpack, you can, uh, you can bring things in. So we'd usually bring in like a, like some, for me, it's like some whiskey and then you can mix that with the Coca-Cola delicious. Um, of course, do it a little secretly. Uh, don't trash the place or anything. Be respectful. But yeah, we'd go in there. Um, you get your own private room. No one interrupts you. I don't believe there's cameras in there. So um, you don't have to worry about like privacy or anything like that. Uh, so you go in, say you go in with like four people. Um, there's couches that are kind of like all like around and then there's a table in the middle and then the karaoke machine. So what's great about that is instead of doing karaoke in like an open bar in America where everyone can hear you and it's embarrassing and you're drunk. So it's, you know, it's intimidating. You don't really want to do it. Um, and maybe like, uh, if you're with some girls that are shy and they don't want to sing, if you're in America, they're probably not going to get up and, you know, start singing, you know, at least, uh, in comparison to like a really drunk guy, for example, you know? Um, but it's, it's really fun in Japan because it's only your friends. So no one cares. No one judges, judges each other. I've heard some of the worst singing from my friends in Japan, but they don't give a shit. They just belt it out. And it's so much fun because I'm a horrible, horrible, horrible singer. I cannot sing for my life, but I like music. And um, the, a lot of these karaoke machines also will have an English menu uh, because American music and foreign songs are also very popular in Japan. Um, so you can find a lot of tracks. Like I found songs like by The Killers, uh, some old classic songs, uh, like the gorillas, some more like hip hop stuff and things like that. You can find that. And, um, so it's a lot of fun. If you're just having drinks, you can order food. Uh, there's, there's a, there's a phone inside of the karaoke booth where you can call, you just pick it up and they, and you tell them like, Oh, we want more drinks. Cause you can order alcohol. You can pay to order alcohol, um, at those places. Um, 
Yeah, and then you can order food as well. They sell like ramen and like spaghetti and like weird hamburgers. They sell a bunch of stuff. It's obviously kind of expensive. Uh, but that's a karaoke bar or a karaoke booth, I guess. And um, what a lot of us would do is after we go out drinking and if we miss the train, um, you could either uh, – you would basically have like three options. You could stay outside or, you know, stay out and keep going. But if you're tired, it's one in the morning and you've been drinking all day. You're, you know, you're pretty exhausted. So – Unless you want to stay in a club till five in the morning, um, or like a bar or like a, yeah, a bar, or like a restaurant or something till like five in the morning. Um, you can go outside because you can drink outside. So what a lot of my friends would do sometimes is just like, Hey, let's just wait till morning. And we would just hang out outside. But of course it's cold. And, um, I remember, uh, in, in Namba specifically the city in Osaka, uh, or the area in Osaka, everyone would go hang out at the McDonald's. <laughs> And it was so funny because there's there's a McDonald's that has like two or three floors, and um, a lot of people would kind of you know go in there to wait for the next train. So if you go to McDonald's in Osaka at two in the morning, you will find uh, high school and college kids filled to the brim, all sleeping. <laughs> we you could go into there or no Starbucks wasn't open all night. Yeah, wait, were they? I think Starbucks was also open all night. Um, I think there was one night where we, we did that same thing, but in a Starbucks. And it's hilarious because the workers that work there, I feel so, uh, poor workers, this is like, I feel so bad for them. Part of their job is just to going around waking everyone up <laughs> and trying to kick them out. Like, hey, get out of here. What are you doing? Like, if you're not ordering any food or any drinks and you're just sleeping, they'll continually wake you up um, trying to annoy you to get out. But if you kind of just, if you're rude, you could ignore them. Um, but, but I saw a lot of Japanese do this where, um, they would go around and like wake them up like, Hey, get out of here. And they just kind of ignore them and like go back to sleep. Um, and of course it's McDonald's, so it's good food. So you can, well, when you're drinking McDonald's is like the best food on earth. So, um, that's one option. Hang on at McDonald's all night. Um, two, do the karaoke thing. Like I mentioned, or three, stay at like a, like a hotel. Um, they, uh, in Osaka, I didn't stay in any capsule hotels, but in Tokyo, I did one. Um, I made a video where I stayed in a capsule hotel. Uh, if, for those who don't know, a capsule hotel is basically, um, a really cheap hotel where the bed is almost like a, like a coffin where like they can basically sardine a bunch of people. And it, it sounds scary for Americans because we're used to, you know, having big rooms and very wide open spaces. Um, and I'm actually a very claustrophobic person. Uh, I like, uh, as a kid, if I ever got like, you know, stuck in a closet or like, I'm like trapped under a bed or something being in like a tight enclosed area, it still freaks me the hell out. I hate it. It is like one of my worst fears is getting like buried alive or something. That would be, that is, that is a horrible aside from, uh, the ocean. I hate the ocean too. Um, that is one of like my biggest, it's like an actual, like, you know, like a fear. Uh, but the capsule hotel for me was very, very comfortable. You basically can go and they have like a bathhouse. So you can go and like take a bath. They give you pajamas and then you can go to sleep in the, the, it's like this little coffin thing that just has a bed, uh, sometimes a TV and like air conditioning and like a light and even like USB slots for charging your phones and stuff. Um, and you can go, yeah. And pass out there. Um, when I went, it seemed to be a lot of like salary men, uh, and they're split gender, they're gender split. So capsule hotels aren't always a great option if you're with a big group. Um, you're not just going to all go to a capsule hotel. Like we never did that. Uh, but that is an option if you're traveling, um, and you want to do it for like a, a new experience. Uh, I absolutely recommend the capsule hotel. It was a lot of fun. Um, and it was really comfortable. I actually like really enjoyed my stay there. I got like really good sleep. Um, I love the bath houses in Japan. Uh, if you don't mind going nude, you'll be fine. Cause that you, you're expected to go nude. Um, so, um, it's basically just like big hot tubs and stuff like that. You clean yourself off and then you can go in and just like relax and uh, yeah, you know, sweat it out. And it just, it feels great. They have a sauna and things like that. And then I just, I had some of the best sleep ever at the capsule hotel. Um, and then um, other options, I guess. Yeah. Are that um, if you're with a uh, special friend uh, and you like a guy and a girl, um, they also have the option for what's called a love hotel. Um, a lot of my Japanese friends were really surprised to find out that we don't have love hotels in America and I think they'd be great, but they, they're very, they're a very Japanese thing. Like they fit Japan, Japanese culture really well. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a hotel for having sex. Um, you basically, you can go in without a reservation. There's a lot of them. 
Uh, they, I think they run for about 6,000 yen. So it's like 60 bucks. You go in with a girl. Uh, I remember seeing like they, cause they have the menus for them. They kind of have like these, uh, billboards outside of them where you can see like the plans. Um, and I'd always read them and it was basically like, you could either pay, it was so funny. You could either pay for one hour for like a certain amount or tw- like 12. <laughs> so it was either like a quick fuck or stay the night <laughs> were like the two options. It seemed like the uh, to be there. So I remember like asking my, my Japanese guy friends about it. Um, got girls too, but obviously it's, it's easier to talk to guys about that kind of subject. Um, that's, that's where they would go with their girlfriends to like have sex. And it seems weird, like that you'd have to pay to go somewhere in order to sleep with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, but, uh, like I mentioned before, Japanese homes are really small and a lot of people, uh, maybe still live with their family. So, um, like in America, you could probably get away with, you know, bringing someone home. If you're quiet and no one hears you, you could probably do that in Japan. Not so much. The houses are small. The walls aren't very soundproof. Um, you can hear a lot. So you don't want to bring that person home necessarily with you. Uh, if your parents are home. So the love hotel is what it's, it's a very, very, uh, common thing in Japan. It's very like normal part of their culture. Um, yeah, it's a place to have sex. So those are basically your options. Um, did I miss any karaoke McDonald's love hotel? Yeah. So we, in my case, we mostly did karaoke. Um, if we were like in a big group, it's like the best. Um, yeah, we mostly did karaoke because that was, uh, it's just comfortable. Like we basically go in there show up maybe at like two in the morning. Uh, and our train is until six. So we have four hours. We'd go in there. We'd like have our last drinks. Uh, but at this point we're really tired, uh, sing a few songs and then people slowly just kind of like fall asleep because there's a couch there. So you can kind of just lay down. Um, and then when your time is up, uh, they'll actually call you on that phone. So you'll hear it ring and they'll say like, okay, your time's up. Like, please come down and pay. Um, so it's, it's also like a wake up alarm. So you could go there. I did that actually a few times, uh, I think two times specifically I went alone because, you know, I'd go out with some friends and they ended up like, Hey, we're going, you know, I, I'm trying to remember like one of the cases, one of them, which is, I apologize that we don't have time for it. Um, I will address these stories another time. Uh, there was a time where I fell asleep on a train, ended up in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I found a karaoke place to just go sleep it off until morning and then go home. Uh, there was a few, there was like two or three times where I did that. So one of like a few of those are some really good stories. So again, I, uh, I really hope to tell you guys at some point, um, here soon. And, um, yeah, but it was great. Like, it's like, Oh shit. You know, I missed my train. I can't go home. Uh, my friends already took off. I'm just going to go to a fucking karaoke place and you just go. It's like, 15, 20 bucks. It's basically like paying 20 bucks for a couch to sleep on. And it's, it's, uh, you know, no one will bother you. Um, you have access to water and a bathroom. It's great. Oh, uh, the last one is one that I never did, which is another option. It's called the, uh, cyber cafe or like an internet cafe. Um, I know it's a big thing in Korea too. I believe they're, they're called like PC bongs, PC spelled like bang PC bang in Korea, in Japan, they're known as net cafe. So netto cafe, Um, you'd go, I never did it, but I had friends who did it and they're everywhere. Um, I just personally never was in a situation where I felt like I had to do it. So I, um, I believe what it is, is you go in and you basically pay like for like a few hours, maybe like 12 hours, six hours, eight hours, and you get access to a computer, uh, a futon, uh, like comic books, video games, uh, soda and water. And they even have showers, I think. So a lot of people they'll go. And you kind of get your own little like booth section I've heard. Uh, and you can choose to pay for the futon or not to sleep on. It's basically just a mattress on the floor, uh, like the Japanese style. And you can go in, yeah, and like check your email, play some video games. Uh, I'm sure some people will do other things on the internet and uh, in those rooms. So uh, I, I don't know if I necessarily want to go. Um, but that's another option because they're 24 hours. So you can just go in there, get a futon and just fall asleep. And it's a cheap way to do that. Um so a majority of what I did in the all nighters, like I said, like three times already was the karaoke booths. And I recommend it for sure. Cause it's a lot of fun. One, it's a lot of fun to actually go do karaoke. Um, but if you need like a last minute resort or like a last resort, uh, for somewhere just, to, just to sleep for a few hours, um, karaoke bars is the thing. So after experiencing that in Japan and just like, it's, it's definitely wild. Like it's definitely a little, a lot more, 
uh, crazy. Um, Japanese, I, I hope this doesn't, I'm not trying to sound racist, this is just a, a part of uh, Japan, is in comparison to, um, actually I took a class in uh, college that kind of helped explain this. Um, in a lot of Asian countries, um, uh, if, if you're of like Asian descent, um, some some uh, peop, peop, like individuals of Asian descent actually lack uh, an enzyme in their body. This is like a, a biology thing. They lack an enzyme that helps break down alcohol. Um, so if you have a friend, um, a lot of, uh, Americans will have like that, that one Asian friend who, whenever they drink, their face gets really red. It's an, it's, I believe it's an allergic reaction. Um, it's actually like their body isn't breaking down the alcohol as, uh, as well as maybe someone like myself who's Caucasian. And, um, so if you go out drinking in Japan, you'll see that, uh, Japanese people tend, they get drunk a little, a lot quicker. Um, a lo so a lot of my guy friends, they would have like one, two drinks and they were drunk, like very, very drunk. And because that's the case, um, and they have the Nomi Hodai and people drink all night, it's a lot more common to throw up, um, which I think is probably good. Like if their body is actually having an, uh, an allergic reaction and if you're feeling sick, it's probably better to throw it up. But um, in America, if you're, th you know, throwing up drunk, uh, it's kind of like, okay, he can't either, like he or she can't handle their alcohol. They're kind of a, a mess. It's usually, it's usually like, like their night's over they're stuck in the corner and they're puking and they're crying and it's just like a mess. But in Japan, it was a lot more just like normal. Like, uh, almost every night we'd go out, there'd always be a guy that would like whisper to me. He's like, Oh, Hey, I'll be right back. I'm going to go throw up in the bathroom. <laughs> and that was just a thing. Like, it's so weird. I it, like, it's still, um, it still makes me laugh because I just remember going to a club and it was like, uh, with a friend, we went to a, um, we went to a bar. Uh, we, uh, all got like, we got like two or three drinks and then we went to the club and the first thing he did is he goes, Hey, uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom, throw up, and then we'll, we'll go in. <laughs> so we went to the bathroom and he threw up and then he came back and he's just like, all right, I'm good. And he like put some gum in and like, I don't know uh, for Americans, that's a very strange concept. It's a very, very different thing, but, um, you will likely see people throwing up in Japan. If you ever do go out, um, like people outside or someone that's too drunk, uh, they drink really, 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 really hard. And it's a lot, it's a really big part of their culture. It's more accepted. The laws aren't so strict. Um, so you can get away with doing it. And it's not, it's, I, I would like to say it's not as frowned upon as a thing. Um, of course, if you're like, you know, belligerently drunk and you're swinging and hitting people and puking, it's, you know, no one enjoys that. But uh, you usually see a lot more tolerance uh, toward people like, um, usually men that drink, uh, Japanese men that would drink so much that their friends literally have to carry them because they can't even walk. Um, I saw that a lot. So you'll see that a lot too, if you go, um, looking at my notes here, just to see if I miss anything. Uh, yeah. Izakaya clubs, bars, karaoke, net cafes, drinking outside, nomi hodai, um, trans. Yeah. I think we kind of basically covered it. Um, so basically like from going from that, and again, every night you would do this, especially the all-nighters, uh, they would call it, uh, I guess it's another word we can look at. Uh, it's just an English word for all night, oru, oru. It's like the Japanese, if you throw like a Japanese like intonation or accent on the word all, just oru. So oru suru, yeah, suru is to do. So like, I'm going to do the all-nighter is basically what it means. Like they would say that all the good night, or they would say that all the time. Like, all right, we're doing an all-nighter tonight. Like, let's go. And, um... That is the most wicked, I'll, I'll warn you, it is the most wicked hangover ever. So we'd usually go out on Fridays and my Saturday consisted of me waking up like feeling sick, tired. I don't want to do anything. I would do no homework. I would just like watch TV. So there is that. Um, and I hate being hungover. So as much as I liked going out and it's like a really wild and crazy time and it can also be relaxing. Again, it doesn't have to be so crazy. Um, I maybe went a little like we're hanging out with some of the more crazy kids and that's maybe why. But um, I'm just saying that it is a lot more common to go and get really drunk and be very hungover. It's a very, like, normal thing. <clears throat> and then I come back to America uh, where people aren't just out, like, throwing up everywhere. Uh, people aren't going out as much. There are, like, in Portland, we have bars and clubs, technically. But they, they close early. They, they all end at, like, 11 or midnight. Um, the city's shut down at, like, midnight. There's nothing to do. Um, there's no trains to take past midnight. I guess Japan is the same way, but our trains aren't like Japan. We don't have them everywhere. Um, you need a car, you have to pay for parking, uh, drinks are expensive. You can't drink outside. So it's really strict. You have to get inside somewhere to drink. 
it's just not as fun in America. It's just, it's different. I'll say that. It, it's very fun. Um, it's just very, very, very different. You don't do all nighters. Um, you're not in a karaoke booth. You're not going to love hotels. You just go to a bar, you have a beer and you hope you have a friend that's a DD to take you home. Um, I don't know. So since, since I've come back to America, it's been kind of a bummer. Uh, like in that, I just kind of miss doing that from time to time. It's exhausting, but sometimes I just want to, you know, go blow steam with some friends and, um, it's just a great way to just blow off and let off steam. And, uh, I love it. (laughs) So again, this might not apply to everyone who maybe doesn't like doing it, but I urge you to try it at least to a, a little bit when you're in Japan, try having just a couple drinks. Um, if, if you're like, okay with it. And if you're like of the age or whatever, um, because it's a totally different experience than in America and it's a lot of fun and you'll see, um, Japanese people are, you know, stereotypically very shy and, um, maybe very reserved. Uh, you go out drinking with Japanese people and they're the most opposite of that. Like people I've ever met in my life. You'll have a great time. I almost guarantee it. Um, Oh, I'm getting a phone call. I'm, uh, I guess you guys will hear really quick. This is my dad. Hold on. Hey dad. Hey, I'm actually, uh, I'm doing a, uh, a podcast, but it's okay. <laughs> um, what's up? So, I need your address. Uh, let me text it to you. Okay, text it to me, and I'm, uh, I'm just heading on my way. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in a while. See you in a while. All right, drive safe. See ya. All right, well, that was my dad. (laughs) Um, Like I said, we're going out to a basketball game later. So let me, sorry to interrupt this. I just need to send him my address really quick. Um, So I guess in the meantime, I want to throw on some Jeopardy music to uh, keep you guys occupied. Here we go. One. Send. We made it in time. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening again. Uh, this th- today's podcast was kind of like, um, I mean, I guess all the podcasts, I kind of like go off on different tangents and, um, but I, the, the, the ones I've done up until now have been a little bit more structured. I'd feel like where I have like, uh, how I learned Japanese, how I studied abroad. So I kind of had like a list of things to mention. This was kind of just, I just kind of wanted to talk about why I like going out drinking in Japan. Um, and it fit because today I'm a little hungover, but I'm in America. So going out was very different. And our night ended at like 11 o'clock last night, maybe midnight. We're like, Oh, I'm tired. Uh, time to go home, which is great. And I got to, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't get a full night's rest, I'd probably feel much worse. So it's probably for the better. Um, I just, uh, it, I really, really fell in love with going out with my Japanese friends and doing kind of the Japanese style, going out drinking, um, it's intense. It's it can, or it can be intense. It can be uh, exhausting, um, but it is such a different experience, and it's so much fun. Um, so coming back to Oregon, which is just uh, not a lot of clubs, uh, we have legal marijuana, so Oregon Oregonians do that, and um, that's another thing we could discuss actually in another podcast sometime. I know it, it can be a touchy subject, uh, but in Japan, marijuana doesn't is not tolerated at all. That's the major difference, I guess, is in America, like alcohol is very strict. In Japan, marijuana is like prison slash uh, you will be deported if you're a foreigner and never allowed to go back to Japan. So if you're a foreigner going to Japan and maybe you're from America or a country where marijuana is more tolerated or legal, please do not do it in Japan. I'm just saying that right now. Don't just, just, just plan on not even no, don't. Um, I'll admit I had friends. I never did it, but I had friends who did do it because they live there. So they, they maybe had a friend who they could buy it from. Anyways, I don't want to get into that topic too much. I'm just saying, I just throw it out there in the, in this, uh, discussion of partying and stuff, drugs are not tolerated. I don't consider weed a drug, but what people might consider a drug like legally, um, like, you know, marijuana, cocaine, and then anything, you know, above that don't do it in Japan. Uh, you, you will get absolutely fucked if you get caught with it. Um, just don't just drink. Drinking is very tolerated. So, and that's, I think that's why people don't need other drugs and things like that in Japan is because they can drink. Um, they drink and they smoke a lot of cigarettes. Uh, cigarette smokers in America have declined a lot, which I'm very happy about. Of course, I'm not a smoker. So, um, 
uh, it's great to not have, you know, cigarette smoke around all the time. In Japan, um, that is another thing I kind of forgot to brush on. Uh, last little note, it's if you're going out, especially to izakayas, you will leave smelling like smoke because a lot of people will be smoking. Uh, smoking in restaurants is still a thing in Japan. Um, I, it, whether or not it'll change in the future, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe in 50 years it'll decline like America's has, but a lot of people and a lot of my male friends, females too, uh, but most of my male friends smoked cigarettes and they still do. So, uh, that's, uh, it's unfortunate, uh, for me, but it's, it's, uh, a different culture. It's not my country. So, uh, it, I think it's unfortunate, but it's just, it's, it is one of the, um, aspects of going out in Japan. So, just bear that in mind. Uh, you will come home smelling like you were smoking all night, even if you weren't. Um, so that's kind of an unfortunate part, but that's also a part of it. Um, yeah, I think, guys, that basically covers um, everything I wanted to bring up today. I hope this was at all insightful. Um, a lot of these things, they were they were things that I didn't know about Japan until I got there. Um, so I kind of learned them firsthand. Uh, I didn't really know. I didn't know about Nomi Hodai, actually, until I went to Japan. Um So discovering that that exists was for an American guy who likes to drink. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Wait, what's the catch? I can drink for two hours. The only catch is that the drinks just aren't very high quality, but it is so much fun. You can buy snacks, get food, drink, you know, with your friends, do drinking games. Um, it's, it's a ton of fun. I totally suggest that you do it. If you are someone who enjoys, um, drinking or just going out in Japan at all, if you want to experience kind of a new culture, That is a huge part of Japanese culture. Um, It might be not, it might not be something you expected to be a part of Japanese culture. So I think it's really important um, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Um, I need to now go get ready uh, to go to the basketball game with my dad. So I'm going to go change and uh, get a little food going and uh, take Shinobi here on a little walk because he probably needs to go pee and poop. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. If you're watching on YouTube Um, again, this is a uh, new weekly podcast that we're doing. Um, So I hope that you like, uh, follow, subscribe, share, retweet, whatever you do, all those things. Please go ahead and do that. Uh, Again, follow me on SoundCloud as well uh, is where I I upload the audio file, which then gets sent out to iTunes and Google Play Music. If either of those are more convenient for someone rather than using YouTube, uh, if you're driving or something like that, please follow me or like me on those. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time, uh, next week with a different topic. Um... I haven't chosen next week's discussion, but I'm going to talk with my roommate, um, who is a Japanese girl from Tokyo. Um, I'm going to ask her and see if she'd be interested in doing an interview with me, um, discussing what, uh, it's been like for her living in America. She's been here for, I think three years now. Um, what it's like living in Portland as a Japanese girl. She's living here like on her own, uh, or, you know, like came here by herself and she now has friends like myself and other Japanese, uh, friends, but, I, I think it'd be interesting to uh, get her perspective and her story on what it's like being here as a Japanese girl. Um, so I'm going to talk to her. I can't guarantee for next week, but if I can, uh, that will be this discussion. If not, we'll find something else to do. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of things planned, but uh, we'll just do them uh, once a week here, week by week. And I hope you guys tune in. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, if you liked it, please do all that liking and following, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good night, everyone. And uh Yeah, go Blazers. Have a good night, guys. Peace.